Uh, this is the uh, Leslie unit that came with that con organ that I bought for 10 bucks and parted out. It was full of uh, mice nests. Didn't feel bad about parting it out because it was not fixable. But I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this thing. It's kind of a cool device. Um, until I was watching some uh, Uncle Doug videos and he had a video of where he took one of these and made it, uh, modified it to be able to receive a guitar amp signal and had a cool sound, a cool tremolo sound. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do with this one. Um, I know already that this motor doesn't seem to turn, so I've got to take that apart, number one, and figure out why. Um, I do have continuity with the speaker that's in there. It's, I think it's about an 8-inch uh, Jensen speaker. So uh, I think that's okay. And the belt is good, and the uh, Leslie uh, swinging thing here, whatever this is called, seems to work. So let's take that motor apart and figure out what's wrong with it. All right, the uh, unit was easy to remove. Just a couple bolts with the wing nuts holding it on to the Leslie unit. It does have an oil here mark, which uh, I'm sure that's never been oiled. So that's probably one thing we'll have to do. Let's see if we can get it apart here. Pull the pulley off. dirty in here. Dust and crap. Let's clean the motor off. Sure this has never been disassembled. Since this unit was from 1964, that's uh, what, what is that? 50, 56 years. It's 2020 now. It's kind of cool pulling something apart. I haven't seen the light of day in that many years and seeing what it looks like. Okay. Got some dust, it still turns, I'm just not getting any continuity. And I don't remember on AC motors if you're supposed to see continuity or not. Maybe I should look that up. Let's do that before we get too deep into this. Well, I got a here's an AC motor, a little skill saw. Got it hooked up to the uh, plug over here. So when you hit the button to turn it on. You see after this uh, very slow uh, meter settles down, it's got about 15 ohms of uh, continuity. So I'm thinking you should see about that on an AC motor. I'm still seeing nothing on this one, so I guess we're going to go ahead and pull it apart and see what's going on in there. going to be not easy to get apart after being together for that many years. But let me go ahead and mark the bells here too. So that one aligns with that one. And both of those align with the 115 volts. Okay. And there we go. Bearings look a little dry, but outside of that, I don't see anything burnt. Try this side. Gonna come out. Okay. All right, 
she's apart. Okay. Well, there's the continuity there, so the fact that I don't have any doesn't bode well. It means that maybe these windings are burned out. So let me poke around and see if I can figure out which one is burned out and which one's not. Well, there's a good sign anyway. So, just using a little cheapo meter here because sometimes it's easier to look at the uh, analog. Just looking at gross measurements. So I'm still seeing no continuity here through the wires. So if I go right to where the wires end, I'm seeing about 20 ohms or 15 ohms, which is what I saw in that, uh, that jigsaw. So it looks like the coils have continuity. It's just the wiring. Either it's broken in here somewhere or there's a bad solder joint there. I'll try resoldering those first. If that doesn't do it, I'll just go ahead and replace this wire. See if that gets this thing spinning. Alright, got a little soldering gun going here. Nothing sophisticated, just an old soldering gun and just gonna touch these up. anything. Still got through the coils. And still nothing through the wires. Let's figure out which one of those is bad. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so it looks like the one that's caught in a copper color does not have continuity. The other one does. So let's go ahead and replace both those wires with something about that size. Let's see if I've got anything around here that'll work. Well, I'm not going to call this a wasted effort 100%. Nothing wrong with the motor. What I found is that this insulation, it looked like, until I put my glasses on here, I couldn't really see, but it looked like that was uh, just copper colored wire, but it was actually additional insulation in addition to this black insulation. So once I peeled that off, now, look at that, you got good continuity. So, but, I had to take the motor apart anyway to uh, lubricate everything. I lubricated these bearings. That one there. And these bearings have nice swivel, swiveling uh, cases here. And then I did the same thing on the bottom bearing here. I got lots of oil in that. Cleaned it all up. So I'll put it back together and I bet it'll work perfectly. Let's see. So sometimes that happens. You know, you kind of have a little brain fart there. And mess up but generally it's okay all right let's see i'm going to line up my tape things here get this all back together probably should clean those out let me get some q-tips and clean out some of that dust stuff before we put this together okay That is in there that's collecting that dust. That may be a little felt thing that you're supposed to oil. I can't tell. Possibly that's what that is. Looks like there's a little felt washer in there. Maybe that somehow gets oil down to that bearing. Got them 
got those bearings definitely oiled. That could be what that's for. And that's why it says oil here. You just oil that, that felt. Let's see. Well, that seems to work. It definitely absorbs oil. I don't know enough about these things to know if that's what you're supposed to do, but it's probably not going to hurt it anyway. And yeah, definitely have oil in there, so it is lubricated. Hopefully, I hear from somebody who eventually watches this if I post it and lets me know if that's a normal thing or not. Okay, that turns. Is one thing I like about YouTube. If you manage to get enough views or subscribers, they can help you out. These people are generally pretty helpful on YouTube. Sometimes you get the occasional person who just wants to blast you, flame you. But those are kind of a rarity. At least for me. I guess if you know, I get dozens of views and you know, everything's mostly positive. I guess if you're one of those that gets millions of views, you probably get more negative stuff. Oops. I'm mostly rambling on here because I'm doubting that I'm even going to use this section on any kind of a YouTube video. Yeah, it might, but. You know, screwing things together is not too entertaining, so I tend to cut that part out. But okay. Okay, before I get this completely reassembled, I'm going to go ahead and risk connecting up some uh, AC to it and see if I can get it to spin. Well, I'm sure it'll work because it's, it's showing good continuity. I'll just go for it. So this goes back together about like that. Get all these back on. This tape can come off. It says oil here. I don't know. I mean, do they want you to oil that little, you know, that right in there and that uh, felt? Maybe. back in the other room, hook it up to the Leslie and see what happens. Alright, got the motor installed back on the Leslie unit. And we got the wire to come wire nutted to a plug. So I'll go ahead and plug it in and see if this thing turns. 
Here we go. Whoa. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? You wouldn't love uh, seeing something like that spinning when you get your guitar playing through it. It's going to make an awesome noise, I hope. So I'll do what Uncle Doug did and put a uh, kind of a, he had a, a fan motor, variable speed uh, fan motor control. So I'll go ahead and mount one of those on here somewhere. I have to make a control panel on this thing somewhere. And also bring the speaker output out and uh, go to a quarter inch jack and um, put a switch on it and everything. Kind of like he did. I'm going to copy his design exactly. But uh, yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. And uh, the motor does work. Obviously, it probably worked before, but at least now it's nice and lubricated. All right, here's the uh, full up test. Just got one of these uh, Sony stereo amps. Uh, on just one. Yeah, I got the speaker hooked up here to the back on A side or the you know one side of the stereo. And I'm playing a tone through it. This is an online tone generator that I use a lot. Um, so let's hit that and see what happens. Oh, it's making a noise. So the speaker is let's see, that's where the sound comes out of that hole right there and then that's no sound so let's go ahead and plug it in see the kind of awesomeness we get science fiction movie, doesn't it? So, seems to work. All I gotta do is put the, uh, well, the fan control and all the other stuff that I want to do, but at least the speaker and the uh, Leslie unit themselves are working perfectly. I pulled off the squirrel cage here, so I wanted to clean it up a little bit and check the bearing on the bottom. I also wanted to look at this speaker here. The Jensen 8-inch uh, speaker just to check mostly for rodent damage because it there was uh, rodents in this organ and it looks like there's I don't know if that's just wear and, normal wear and tear or whatever but that dust cap is kind of wearing thin so I may want to replace that. I'll go ahead and lubricate the bushings here too. But um, this thing is working well. It's been a long, long time since I've got So, uh, that seems to be working okay. I'll go ahead and put this back together and uh, we'll give it another test. It's working. Got a little fader here to turn it on and off and control the speed. Seems to work too. Here's a little update on the uh, Leslie. I've been using this plastic sheet that I have and cutting the different, different pieces of it. And I made a little faceplate here, a little control panel with the on off switch fuse and then I've got an IEC type three prong connector here so I've added a uh, ground wire and hooked it up to the case of the uh, of the motor Which will hopefully make that a little safer since it is going to be exposed and you know able to touch it and everything and then I've got the speaker itself attached to a little uh, quarter inch um, jack so I can jack in any type of a uh, uh, amplifier to that and I have been plugging up all the holes that this thing had initially with this plastic stuff or the fiberglass 
And I've got a couple more pieces here that I'm gonna plug up that hole, but I've got to leave this uh, adjustment exposed here and this hole exposed for uh, to be able to uh, maintain and adjust the belt. So, but it'll hide all that uh, insulation there. I just put some feet on the bottom, and that's gonna be that's gonna be it. And I know Uncle Doug built a whole uh, a cage for his and actually suspended his upside down, but this made sense to me to do it this way. I don't know that I'll ever even, ever even use this thing, but um, it should work. All right, got this guy all ready to go here. I'm plugged into a little Squire uh, Champ amplifier that I had to modify so that I could have a output, you know, speaker output going in. So flip the switch and it spins up. Now I tried it with a, with a uh, microphone and I noticed some uh, distortion. So here I've got the amp set up with a uh, little audio frequency generator. And you know at higher frequency it sounds okay. But as you lower it down Here's some real bad vibration. Let me just slow this down. So something is rattling in there right at the lower frequencies. So let me go ahead and pull the squirrel cage off and look down at the speaker and see if maybe there's some issue with it or if there's just something in there on the speaker rattling or, or what. Alright, got the squirrel cage removed. Go ahead and fire this guy up again. That's definitely making some racket. is where it really shows up. So what I've noticed is when I manually move the speaker, I'm getting some popping and snapping from down the voice coil area. So I don't know if the voice coil is rubbing or you can see where maybe this uh, the dust cover is deteriorated. Maybe some of it has fallen down in there, or maybe it was from the mice that were eating at that or something. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to replace the speaker or maybe try to recone it. Um, see if I can improve the sound. So, that may be what I try to do. And, uh, yeah, this is a uh, fairly nice uh, Jensen speaker. So it's probably worth reconing. I'll check and see if I can find a kit for it and see what it would take to fix it up. I pulled the bottom uh, off the Leslie unit here and got the old uh, Jensen speaker out of the uh, unit. And unfortunately, I think this thing has, uh, well, you can hear it's got some noise in the voice coil. So there's either something has gone wrong with the uh, voice coil itself or some dirt has gotten in there. It's pretty rattly. So that needs to be reconed and I have not found a reconing kit for this little 8 inch speaker. I don't know if the one is made. So I think what I'm going to do is just steal the speaker out of this little Squire amp and pop it in uh, the Leslie. And then I found I can get a um, Celestian 8 inch speaker for like 30 bucks. So I think I'll order one of those and upgrade this uh, amp with a better speaker because this has just got a little no name 8 inch speaker in the, in the unit right now. But it sounds pretty good. So I'll put it in here and uh, pull that one out and see if that'll make some uh, decent sound. Now here's the uh, stuffing that was in that. 
speaker unit. And uh, this came out of a uh, con organ that I bought for like 10 bucks. And uh, it had uh, definitely a, a mouse nest in it, or some type of rodent nest. And I can see now this is where they got the material to build that because uh, you can see that it's definitely eaten away. And that's the type of stuff that I found up in the keyboard of the organ when I was disassembling it. So that's the plan. I'll go ahead and swap these speakers out, get another try, and see how it sounds. All right, I got the uh, Champ Squire speaker pulled. You see, it's pretty puny looking compared to this old uh, Jensen here, which I kind of hate to retire, but I don't know there's too much I can do about it to fix it up. I'll hang on to it. Uh, but here is the code on these things. So it says 220, which is Jensen. And then it was made in the 35th week of 1964. So that's period correct. It's the one that would have originally come in there, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and try this one in here. And if it doesn't sound good, I can always uh, get another one of those Celestians and try it out in there. But it sounded okay in this amp, so let me see what it sounds like uh, in the Leslie. All right, got the speaker in there. It sounds a lot better than the noisy Jensen. Um, but some of that uh, frequency, I think, was a kind of a combination of uh, like a little bit of a beat frequency between the uh, Squire amp and the frequency generator. I'll show that in just a minute. But I decided not to use this old mouse uh, eaten up um, insulation. The padding. Now I've got some uh, pink stuff here that I'll just go ahead and cut to size and put that in there. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and put the bottom on. Before I do, let me just show this here. Turn this back on and crank it up. Now if you notice that speaker. see it on camera but there's a point a frequency at which this uh, kind of um, even though the tone coming in is uh, an audible frequency but the the cone actually stops moving um, so I think that's some of the distortion that I'm hearing in that sound but it definitely sounds better than the the noisy Jensen so I'm gonna leave that one in there but I'm not gonna throw that Jensen away I think I'll Try to fix it later on. Yeah, the conversion of the uh, Leslie unit of my old uh, $10 con uh, organ has, uh, is complete. Um, works pretty well. Here's another um, code here on the, on the motor. So it says 115 volts, uh, 60 cycles. That A70 it draws about 6 to 7 tenths of an amp. Uh, when it's running, so I think that's what that means. I think this other digit here is the manufacturer's code, and here's the date code, the 21st week of 1964. So, uh, originally I said, uh, when I started on this thing, I said I was going to kind of copy uh, Uncle Doug's design of the uh, Leslie that he converted for guitar amp use. I didn't copy that exactly, because he had his kind of turned this way with a uh, support system um, you know, to kind of hold it up uh, so this wound up being on the top and then the Leslie was in the middle and then a little base was on top I decided to just do it this way I put some little feet on the bottom of this thing and that seemed to work out best for this particular shape uh, this thing so it does work you can flip it on now originally I had uh, a little fan controller in here to control the speed. That didn't work too well. So I decided uh, if I wanted to control the speed I'd just hook it up to a, a Variac, which I have it hooked up to now. That's at 117 volts. Spins at full speed. 
if I set the variac down to about 60 volts or so, that's about as slow as I can get it. The stall speed on that thing is about 60 volts. I'm down to about 55, so it might go ahead and stall. Looks like it's going to. Crank it up a little bit. There's about 62 volts and it keeps running. Right, bring it back up. 115. And do a quick test here. So you hear what it sounds like. Testing one, two, three, four. So that's that cool wop 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 sound. I don't know what I will use this thing for. I'm not a guitar player, so I don't have a, even have a guitar to plug into it to hear what it would sound like. Um, I'm not even sure what Uncle Doug does with his. Maybe he could uh, chime in on the comments and let me know. But uh, this one's done. And hopefully I'll find a use for it. Thanks for watching.